In this episode of the Sojourn Expedition, we spend one month in the mountains of North Carolina. We explore its best mountain towns, we find beautiful hikes under the fall colors, we visit Asheville for a tour of the Biltmore, and we brave freezing temperatures to collect pumpkins in the Nantahala Gorge. Morgan, right there, get it! And much more. We are sitting at the base of the Smoky Mountains in Bryson City, North Carolina, and we're going to be here for one full month. We're going to check out some new hikes and find small diners while we're exploring little mountain towns like Waynesville and Cherokee. We're going to stay in Asheville and tour the Biltmore. We're hoping to hit Mount Mitchell and the Blue Ridge Parkway. Also, on top of all of that, it is October and the leaves are changing, so it's going to be beautiful. We got here yesterday and we've been getting settled in, but Morgan is wasting no time. She is already embracing the autumn season. She found a local farm here in Bryson City that does hay rides to a pumpkin patch, and so that is where this little autumn adventure is going to begin. Tonight we're at Darnell Farms. It's a local family owned farm. It's a well-known business in the community because they host festivals throughout the year. They have a full farmer's market. They grow sweet corn, strawberries, squash, but tonight we are here to do a hay ride to the pumpkin patch. We have made it to the pumpkin patch and it's an actual pumpkin patch. These pumpkins are not pre-picked. So now we're on a mission to find our two perfect pumpkins. Morgan's taking this responsibility very, very seriously. Why do you like this pumpkin? It's very symmetrical. I like the little stem. I think it adds a lot of character and I think with a little cleaning up it's gonna be just right. This one. Found it. Short and fat. Ah. What makes that the perfect pumpkin? Because Morgan said so. We had a great time at Darnell Farms and once we got back from the hayride, we even got some fall decorations for the bus. It started with a few gourds, then we got some hay, then we got some corn stalks. We didn't really think that went through. Of course, once Morgan got going with the decorations, there was no stopping her, so last night we had to make a trip to the craft store to get just a few more items. And once we got back, Morgan started decorating, and I must say, it is very, very cozy in the bus. Well done on the decorating. Thank you. Mm. 
It's Friday morning and we are looking for donuts. So there's only one donut shop anywhere close to where we're staying. It's called the Mini Donut Place and it's in Cherokee. So we've got glaze, fruity pebble, vanilla, banana cream pie, and strawberry shortcake. We found this little campground on Airbnb and it has been perfect for us. The owners have been great and it has been so quiet, but the best part of all is that we are about five minutes from the Deep Creek entrance of Great Smoky and we're about five minutes away from downtown Bryson City. And I must say, Bryson City is the quintessential mountain town. There are hikes nearby, there are streams to fly fish, downtown has tons of little mountain shops and a general store. And every day we've gone into town, there have been local musicians and it just adds to the little mountain town atmosphere. Yes, shout Lula, shout, shout, what in this world you shout about? Also, you wouldn't expect it in a town this size, but the food is great and there are tons of options, including the Everett Street Diner, which is the best diner on this side of North Carolina. Plus, to top it all off, you've got the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad, which has a steam engine. It's really cool, and again, it just adds to that mountain atmosphere. Yes, shout, Lula, shout, shout, what in this world you shout about? There is so much character in this town. If you're coming through North Carolina, you have to stop in Bryson City. The fall colors were shining through, especially on our hikes. Today we're doing a little hike in Cherokee up to Mingo Falls. It's about a .6 out and back, so it's not too long of a trail, but it's got a lot of steps. But the most important thing is that it's got a great payoff at the end with a beautiful waterfall. We had a great breakfast this morning at Everett Street Diner, and now we are gonna hit the hiking trails. We're driving up to Black Rock Mountain Trail, just outside of Silva, which is another little mountain town. And it's right off the Blue Ridge Parkway, so we should have a little scenery on the way. But the trail is about five miles out and back, and because it's not in Great Smoky National Park, the dogs are welcome. Clouds. Slight miscalculation on our part. We checked the weather, but we checked in the wrong spot. It's a little windy and a little cloudy today, so if we did hike to Black Rock Mountain, we wouldn't really see much. So we're gonna take the dogs up one of the knob trails here and then find something else to do for the rest of the day. What do you think about the view? Beautiful. Beautiful. Lou and Piper still had plenty of energy, so we made a stop at the Tuckasegee River. At one point, Northerners tried to crash the party.
but Piper was vigilant in her duties. Today we are headed into Waynesville for the 35th annual Waynesville Apple Festival. Tons of vendors set up in downtown Waynesville all day. They've got food, they've got craft, there's a bluegrass band that's gonna be there, there's even some clogging that's gonna happen, so it should be a good time. Let me tell a story, I can tell it all about a mountain boy who ran illegal alcohol. His daddy made the whiskey, sunny all the load. Each time his engine roared, they call that highway thunder road. Sometimes in Nashville, sometimes in the sound. So we got our lunch. We got a turkey leg, a beef euro, and a bloomin' onion with a Pepsi to drink for a grand total of $60. <laughs> We are leaving, but we had a great time here at the Apple Festival in Waynesville. Tons of great vendors, tons of local artists, and the music was great. We got some sweets, we got lunch, and we even stopped by the general store to pick up some hiking supplies because now we are headed up to Black Rock Mountain to give it another go. back to the bus and picked up the dogs and now we are back at the Black Rock Mountain Trail. This is actually our third time trying to do this trail. Obviously our last go was a little foggy, but we even tried to do it last year on our honeymoon and it did not work out. So hopefully third time's a charm. So we're not quite hitting this trail in the sweet spot when it comes to foliage. If we had been able to hike it a couple of weeks ago when we came up, it probably would have been perfect. But we're about 6,000 feet up and a lot of these trees have already lost their leaves. Although it is still a beautiful hike and it's got a couple of really nice overlooks, so no complaints so far. Pretty cool hike, a little tough at the end, but not a bad view. Definitely a great payoff. We have been in North Carolina for three weeks now and we are loving it. The views are spectacular, the people are great, and the little mountain towns are fun to explore. One of those little mountain towns is Cherokee. 
Cherokee, North Carolina is the southern gateway into Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So when you're in town, hiking and wildlife are only a few minutes away. The city of Cherokee is also part of an Indian reservation, so there is a ton of culture to be found. There's some amazing artists that weave baskets and make carvings, and their talent is obvious from their work. Unfortunately, it feels like their work is overshadowed by tacky tourist shops, which is one of the reasons that we didn't spend more time in Cherokee. Although it does have another great little mountain diner named Peter's Pancakes and Waffles, we stopped there on our way up to Mount Lacan and it was delicious. Now we are headed into Asheville to spend a couple of nights in a tiny home while we explore the area. cabin in the woods. We found it on Airbnb for our time in Asheville. It's called The Roost and it's perched up here on this hill and I'm going to show you guys around. As soon as you step inside the door, you're greeted by the little wood burning stove on the right to keep us warm, hopefully on a cold fall night like tonight. Right in front of the front window, we have the nice little desk workspace area and they added a really nice touch with the guest book and a photo book of the build process from the cabin. And right in front of the other front window is the full-size bed, which they added some little chocolates on the pillow for us, making it feel like a five-star experience. And the tiny house is complete with a nice little kitchenette dining area. They even have a nice French press for our coffee in the morning and a tea kettle to heat up our water. And last but not least, the deck. That night we checked out downtown Asheville. We grabbed dinner at White Duck Taco. These are the best tacos in Asheville. Of course we got dessert. Then we got cozy in our cabin. Last night was a very cold night up here in the mountains. Temperatures got well below freezing, but we were very warm and cozy in our little cabin. Now we're headed up to the Biltmore Estate to check out the grounds and do a tour. When you visit the Biltmore, the Biltmore House is the main attraction, but there are plenty of other things to do on the property. We started our day at Antler Hill Village. The village has stores, restaurants, and a winery. It also has some pretty cool trains at the Gardens Railway. These trains are accompanied by replicas of iconic landmarks like the Sphinx, the Great Wall of China, and the Colosseum. Not far from there is the farmyard, which has some very friendly farm animals. Once we were done at the village, we headed towards the Biltmore House. We are in the Biltmore Gardens. There are a lot of beautiful flowers, but it is later in the season, so the rose gardens out here aren't as vibrant as they are the rest of the year. We're gonna check out the conservatory next, which is beautiful year round. We're inside the Biltmore House Conservatory, and this is where they kept all of the tropical plants. It stays warm pretty much all year long. There's a ton of beautiful plants to see, and a cool touch is all the replicas that you can find around the conservatory of the house and even the conservatory itself. Now we're done walking around the grounds and it's just about time for our tour, so we're gonna head inside.
The Biltmore House has 250 rooms with an astounding 175,000 square feet of space. The whole tour took us about two hours. Our tickets for the Biltmore were for October 20th, and they had already decorated for Christmas. No joke. Christmas decorations aside, it was beautiful. I'd never seen anything like it before. The amount of time and money that went into building this masterpiece of a house is just kind of beyond belief to me. I know it doesn't compare, but we converted a bus. And I know how long it took to get every detail just right inside that bus. And then I look at the details of the Biltmore house and I just can't even comprehend how long that would take. The entire property is like one massive, incredible piece of art that these people poured their lives into. It's extravagant and it's over the top, but at the same time it's here for us today and to be able to explore it and have that peek into history is really awesome. There's so much time and energy and in the end you get this beautiful, beautiful estate. It cost a fortune. It probably cost the budget of a small country but it is beautiful and now it really just acts as a museum for everyone to see these beautiful pieces. Now we're packing up to leave our tiny home in the woods. We did have some plans for today. We were gonna to go to Mount Mitchell, but the Blue Ridge Parkway in that direction is closed, so we can't do that. But we should still be able to take the Blue Ridge Parkway back towards Bryson City. The Blue Ridge Parkway spans 469 miles with millions of visitors each year. Views like these, it's easy to see why people come from far and wide to drive this parkway. We are back in Bryson City and we're getting to that time in the season when there are more leaves on the ground than what's left in the trees. But it is still the fall season and so we are taking part in all of the festivities. Today we are headed down to the Nantahala National Forest and the Nantahala Outdoor Center to take part in Noctoberfest. Today we are taking part in the Great Pumpkin Pursuit here at the Nantahala Outdoor Center. They are going to drop 200 pumpkins into the rapids and there will be a bunch of boats out there called duckies which are like small versions of rafts. And whoever gets the most pumpkins wins the grand prize but also each pumpkin is numbered and they're going to do a raffle after the event. So we're headed up to the launch site and just taking a look at the rapids that we're going to have to go over while collecting pumpkins. So we're getting ready to launch and apparently a bunch of people didn't show up because they were freezing temperatures this morning. It was like 29 degrees so they didn't want to get in the water so I don't understand that. You better be ready to move. Ready? Oh my gosh, this is a train wreck. Our start was a little rough, then we hit the rapids. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hey, your side has to go first or else we're tipping. All right, let it go, let it go. It's coming off. We're good, we're good. Oh, hold up, hold up. We're coming to the fault. Hold on. It's okay, we're right. We're good, we're good, I got you. Woo! Morgan, right there, get it! Get it! <laughs> get it, get it, get it! We ended up bagging four pumpkins and we scored a couple of NOC hats during the raffle. 
Overall, we had a great time. Nantahala delivered just like everything else during our North Carolina stay. Also, this whole time, we have been parked five minutes from the entrance of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and we have been exploring the park a lot.